uh, I'll never forget this. It was July of 2017 where my back went out and it went out for eight months. Excruciating pain. I would literally adjust five patients and I have to go in my exam room, lay on the floor and just let my muscle spasms relax so I can get back up and have the energy to go adjust five more people and then go back. And I would do this throughout the whole day. And I did that and then lasted for eight months. Um, that was a scary moment because five months in, I started, I'm very, I'm very strong minded in a lot of what I do uh, in the essence of like, I know things take time, right? Healing takes time. And I had trust in that. I broke down in five months, which is a very long, a very long time for the pain I was going through. And I'll never forget. It was one of those things where I even looked at my coach I was talking to and I'm like, I don't know if I can, I'm, I mean, I, I really have to start looking at hiring a doc to take over my office and I'm gonna have to stop practicing. I just don't know how much I can take. Fear stops us from achieving our true greatness. Are you a professional woman who is feeling stuck, unmotivated, or burned out? Are you worried about your wellness? Are you letting fear stop you from crushing your goals? If you answered yes to any or all of these, then this is the podcast for you. Dr. Charmaine Gregory, Night Shift Emergency Physician, Burnout Thriver, and Wellness Champion, along with everyday heroes just like you, will explore how to face fear in our lives and emerge victoriously. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified when the next video comes out. It only takes two seconds to make two clicks. So let's do it. Let's get back to the video. Hello, 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 Fearless Freedom Tribe. It is yours truly, Dr. G, and we are here for another exciting episode of the Fearless Freedom with Dr. G podcast. Today, we have Dr. Victor Manzo with us, and he's going to tell us all about himself and what he is up to, because apparently he's up to a lot. Just a little. Appreciate having me on. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. 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 Yeah. You got to let us know, light it up. Let's know what's, what's up with you and who you are and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, so I've been a, a, a chiropractor for 12 years now and, uh, never planned on being a chiropractor. It wasn't something I even thought about, um, until I had some health issues at 19 years old that, um, got me a little worried and, you know, cause there was so many different things going on. So many different systems were affected and, uh, right before going to a medical doctor, my mom was like, um, which took me about a month before I was able to get in. She was like, why don't you go see Dr. Frank? And that was a chiropractor I used to saw, see when I was a kid. And she's been seeing him since I was, she was one year, well, since I was one years old, not when she was one years old. And uh, long story short, I was like, well, all right, fine, let's make it happen. She was able to get me in and my whole entire life changed. And that's what intrigued me to become a chiropractor. When I got into chiropractic school though, I wanted to learn the depth of healing and all that I can. Fortunately, I wasn't learning that part in chiropractic school per se. So I was like, well, I'm going to go into energy healing and start learning energy medicine practices and techniques and uh, dive into that stuff. And I learned way more than I thought I was going to because I didn't just learn about healing. I learned about uh, you know, quantum physics and, and uh, uh, some universal laws and ancient wisdom and spirituality and all these other things that was answering way more questions for me about life and other stuff too. And it wasn't until I applied that into my own business and life. I mean, I did to a certain degree, but not 100% altogether until five years into my business where I was like kind of, um, I hit my financial peak, but I was exhausted. I was burned out every four to six months. Um, I was unsatisfied. I was really unfulfilled. I really thought having all that type of impact in my business and the money I was making or my impact in my community and the money I was making and so forth. I was like, I'm shocked. I'm not happy, but I'm not. I'm like, it's, it does. I'm more, I'm actually more unhappy than I was oh, before. No. Yeah. It didn't make sense. It just did not make sense to me. Did some soul seeking. I looked at my wife. I literally, she, she managed the office and I told her, I was like, I don't know if I want to continue doing this. Now you're talking to a guy who's extreme. I don't do things unless I'm very passionate about it. And I was like, I can't understand how I'm burned out, but also very passionate about chiropractic. Did some soul seeking. I took a 40% hit on purpose where we reconfigured our office to what we really wanted to have it as. And then I went into pediatrics and so forth, or more pediatric focus in a year. And I started to apply the print. I went against a lot of the principles that the business people will tell you and self-help personal development. Like you got to read all these books, you got to grind, hustle, put in the sacrifice and sweat equity and all that fun jazz. 
And uh, I did something what I call effortless success, where I started to utilize all the universal principles, the quantum physics, the neuroscience. I started to just say, you know what, if, if I'm truly the creator of my life, then I should be able to choose my success in the way I want to experience it. And a year and a half later, we got back to our financial peak and I was working over 50% less. And at that point, that's where I decided, I was like, you know what, entrepreneurs need to know this. I need to do this in some way, shape or form of some sort of coaching. I don't even know what it's going to be. I used to call myself a catalyst mindset. Uh, was I a catalyst mindset, a mindset catalyst trainer? Anyhow, long story short, I was at a point where I was like, I want to train, teach entrepreneurs this so they can get out of this trap. And I started doing coaching on the side. And it wasn't until this year uh, I went full time into coaching. Uh, and right now I don't practice chiropractic, but eventually I'll get back into it. Wow. So that's me in a nutshell. That's- yeah, that's quite a, quite a lot to unpack there. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, okay. So your mom had, you know, she had, you had been exposed to chiropractor like before, like, you know, she said, sounds like she was, you, she took you there even when you're like one year old. Is that correct? No, I, she, was, go, she, she was going to a chiropractor since I was one years old, but she did oh, since take you me to were him. one year. Okay. I gotcha. But she did take me to him. Uh, when I was a kid, about nine and a half to about 11 years old, I had bedwetting okay. issues and some other stuff. And so, um, that helped me out there. But, uh, one thing I didn't share in the story was, is that my mom's been a fitness instructor since I was one years old also, and she's I been see. a yoga instructor for the last 20 years. Gotcha. And so what really inspired me, like really blew my mind about chiropractic was, is I was always taught because of my mom health is exercise nutrition and taking supplements. That's just what I saw her do all the time. Right? Oh, I Cause see. we don't okay. learn, but what, we, so I thought that's what it was at 19 years old. I was playing rugby at, for the club, uh, for Arizona state for their club team. So you talk about exercising to a whole nother level. I was still doing that is. workouts on top of the right two uh, two and a half hours of conditioning. I mean, I ran five minute miles. I was like, come on, that's I'm nuts. not a small guy. So I'm like, so I was like, I'm in the best shape of my life. And yet every month my health was declining for almost a whole year. I it didn't see. make sense. And okay. that's when I was like, all right, I don't know what's going on here. That's what scared me. Cause I'm like, I'm taking other herbs. I'm doing this. I'm uh, cause I started self teaching myself nutrition and herbs at 16. And so by then I'm like, I'm, I'm trying all the herbs that are tra- that help with this. And it's not, I don't get this. And that's okay. where doing chiropractic. That's the only thing I did. Not only did it change and get rid of all my symptoms in two months, like my chiropractor was telling me he also, but what happened, which was shocking I got in the best shape of my life four months in. I went down to 10% body fat. I was always like, I was a big guy. I just wasn't for all the conditioning I can do and all the working out I can do. I thought I should have been way better shape and I wasn't. And it was in four months, all of a sudden I got into that shape. And I was like, I remember coming back home because I decided to get out of computers and go to business school. So I went back to Chicago uh, instead of staying out there. And I came home and I was like, you have an eight pack. I'm like, I know it's the craziest thing. I don't know how this happened. My workout didn't change. I didn't change my eating habits. Nothing changed. I was enjoying the heck out of that. Of course you were. (laughs) Well, I'm sure having youth on your side did not hurt. (laughs) Oh no, that definitely helped too. Right, 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 right. No, that's fantastic. Okay. And then, so, you know, then you, you found you got to that point. It sounds like you. So you got to the point where you were like at a crossroads of heightened passion for your craft and burnout. Did I hear that right? Okay. Yes, yes All right. you did. Yeah, yeah. And so that's fascinating that 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 kind of like led you down a completely different pathway. You know, it did. It, it started to challenge the the status quo of what we're told, right? Because I was studying the best chiropractors that I can possibly learn from. Mm-hmm. Uh, for I mean, I, I I even when I was in chiropractic school, I shadowed at almost at least forty to sixty different chiropractors. I mean, I was so ambitious. I'm wanting to be successful, um, and that's because you know I come from a family of blue collar, and and I saw the struggles financially and stuff. So I was like, I'm gonna do whatever in my power. These guys are successful, or these girls are successful. I'm learning from them, and what I can pick their brain and whatever I can. And I did that when I got out of school and I, I started, I'm like, okay, I'm in business now. Okay. I'm studying the best business people I possibly can. I'm going to read their books. I'm going to listen to the podcast that they have. If it's at the time, uh, I'm going to watch their videos. I'll go to the workshops. I'll do whatever I have to do. I, I, I need to be successful in, in, in many different ways. And that was the shocking thing when I hit the burnout phase. And I was just like, my gut kept telling me this is not how it's done. 
Mm. And I don't know if it's because what I knew from a spiritual context and from the, you know, universal laws and what quantum physics talked about when I studied was that, you know, it's like you, if we're truly, uh, you know, if everything's vibration, then really I can choose a vibration and I can have that instead of uh, having to force all this stuff because everything we're right. taught is force. But when you look at, when you look at the conditioning of Western civilization, it's all force. You know, we use force for everything and we don't use, we don't step into our power. We give it away. And that's the moment where I started to go, you know what? I need to step into my power. And I started to do that in many different ways. And um, everything was aligned. It, everything just happened. And now I'm at a point in my life and this is what I teach clients. You, you don't have to figure out the next step. You don't have to try to think about it. It'll come to you. And it's a whole different way of thinking. Now, our... Have you integrated some Eastern principles? Because I'm, because what I'm hearing from you, you're talking about energies and all of these things are a lot of these things are like Eastern concepts. So I'm just trying to like get an understanding of of, of what, like what areas you ended up studying to get to this place. There's a lot I studied, so it's not like it's one or the other. Um, I've always I've always been someone who goes as deep and as wide as I can when I get curious about something. So yeah, there's a lot of Eastern philosophies like Taoism. I looked into that. There's different yoga practices and principles. Why, where do those come from? Like Kriya Yoga, Kundalini Yoga. What's the principles and backgrounds? But martial arts studying I've done. Um, I've, I only did martial arts for like two years of my life, but Kung Fu was a big movement of mine. But I've studied other principles, and there's just there you know one of the biggest for me. Um, that had a big impact was, you know, uh, Lao Tzu and, 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 and I didn't, I studied a little bit of Taoism, but I've studied a lot of Lao Tzu's work, which he's the founder of Taoism. And, uh, a lot of that stuff aligns with universal laws, it aligns with quantum physics stuff. And, and that's what intrigues me the, the most, um, in those elements. And so it's one of those things where a lot of it does come from, but again, different practice, Hinduism, study a lot of that. Uh, Buddhism study a lot of those things. So, and I've taken little bits and pieces and then I'm always using, I guess, science in a certain way, if it can, um, we are catching up uh, in many ways. Uh, maybe that's because, you know, I have a very strong left brain and very logical in what I like to do, but at the same token, um, I think people always need some sort of like, like, for example, if I, when I was learning energy healing, I talk about auras, people are like, oh, that's, that's great. That's, that's out there stuff. That's woo woo stuff. Okay. Well, it's, let's call it biophotonic fields then. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. It's just scientifically, that's the name for it. Uh, but it's, it, it's been proven, but you know, so I'll work with you where you are. And so that's kind of where my, I like that from my background, it gives me so much flexibility. Cause even when I'm working with certain clients, um, uh, because some people go, like, oh, you get real spiritual in your stuff. Do you do that with everybody? No, it depends on what the person is because I got to know where they are mm -hmm. uh, and what they are comfortable with. And, you know, and if they don't like these terms, well, then I'll choose a different term that's scientific. And that way we can still have that conversation and we can create that transformation. Hey, it's Dr. G. And I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank you for listening to this episode. I'm so honored to have you here with me. Did you know that I can help you to get your own podcast started? With my podcasting launch course for professionals, I walk you through everything you need to know about starting a podcast. I'm with you every step of the way from sign up to launching your show with five episodes ready to go. There's a done for you version that's also available. If you would just rather just do recordings and leave the behind the scenes work up to us, then that one is definitely for you. But either way, we've got your back here at Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Oh, if you already have a show and you need production services, we have monthly plans available for you. So check out the links in the episode show notes for more information. Let's get back to the show. Not as good. And, and so tell me, you have to have had some moments of fear along the road here. I mean, you went from, you know, having to grapple with your health at a very young age and then having to make a dramatic change. You also had a situation where, you know, you're, you're in your profession and then you're like seeing a fork in the road and you're wondering which path should I take? Let's, let's hear about the fear and how you, uh, how you overcame that. 
I never had fear. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> there was a lot of fear. I mean, you know, it's, it, I'm human and I love to share these things because it, it, it's, it's one of those things. And um, yeah, I mean, I've had, you know, some of I, I mean, two years in the, I, I remember just starting my business. There was so much fear. Am I able to do this? Can I overcome this? Can I, can I really create this life? Is it really, can I really do this? And um, there, there's so many things that overtook me just in the beginning. I mean, I ended up going bankrupt in two years into my business. I didn't go bankrupt business wise. I went bankrupt personally. Um, I had to make a choice so at that time. I had so many student, I had student loans and all these other things I was making. I was making money was coming in. It just wasn't meeting my expenses. I mean, I lived at home. I mean, I, I mean, my food bill wasn't too crazy. I ate organic, but um but the student loans were just not friendly mm. uh, back then. Yeah. This is right after a year or two, right after, you know, October 8, 2008, 2009. So mm. banks were not friendly at all. They were like, you got to pay full and that's the end of it. And um, I just I couldn't keep up as much as I could. And plus I was very ambitious. So I put everything on credit cards to start my business, which never recommend that for business advice, but um, <laughs> never recommend it. Very uh, risky. But- <laughs> yeah, very risky. Well, I was just, that's how ambitious I was. I was like, I know yeah. the principles. This is how ego yeah. gets in the way, right? Because I'm like, I know universal laws. I know this. I know this. I know this. I just have to do this and everything's going to line up. Yeah. Universe had a different, different practice for me. Um, but, you know, and, and even making certain decisions, like you know, where we went in 2016, I'll never forget peak, where I'm at my peak. There's a fear of like, do I really want to continue practicing? Mm-hmm. Is it really fulfilling for me? And, right. and that's fear. That was fearful for me because here I am a guy who's very passionate about chiropractic in so many ways. And yet I was thinking of mo- walking away from that. And, you know, fear comes in so many different aspects, but, um, you know, 2017, when I finally made the change, uh, I'll never forget this. It was July of 2017 where my back went out and it went out for eight months, excruciating pain. I would literally adjust five patients and I have to go in my exam room, lay on the floor and just let my muscle spasms relax so I can get back up and have the energy to go adjust five more people and then go back. And I would do this throughout the whole day. And I did that and then lasted for eight months. Um, that was a scary moment because five months in, I started, I'm very, I'm very strong minded in a lot of what I do uh, in the essence of like, I know things take time, right? Healing takes time. And I had trust in that. I broke down in five months, which is a very long, t- very long time for the pain I was going through. And I'll never forget. It was one of those things where I even looked at my coach I was talking to. And I'm like, I don't know if I can, I'm, I mean, I, I really have to start looking at hiring a doc to take over my office and I'm gonna have to stop practicing. I just don't know how much I can take. And thank God, thankfully, a couple months later, I started to feel a shift and, and then another month it was, it was gone. Um, but there was a blessing in that too. Uh, because I, I had, I had scoli- I had scoliosis and, and I say had, because we found out during that process, my spine was straightening out, which was the craziest thing. Um, you know, and, and, and I can share more. I mean, like right now, like when I shifted and let go of my practice, that was a fear in itself because I was trying to sell my practice and we couldn't sell it. And it wasn't that it wasn't, I mean, it was a very profitable business. Uh, even my broker was like, I wish I had your, I wish this practice was in Tennessee, Texas, or Florida. We could have sold it with a piece of cake, it would have been sold in a month. He goes, the problem is, is is you're in Illinois. And then a lot of chiropractors are leaving the state due to the COVID and what was going on. And so there was a fear. So the fear kicked in looking at my wife. Well, we want to move to Tennessee. That's what we wanted. We want to start a family, but we're held with the practice. Are we going to let the practice hold us back because of money and our lifestyle that we have? Or are we going to choose what matters most to us? That's scary in itself because that's a 90% hit on our income. I was coaching. I've been coaching for three years, but it was always a side hustle. It wasn't my full business. And you know, all of a sudden, when we were going to make that shift, I looked and I said, well, I, my wife's like, I trust you. I know you can do whatever you're going to you say you're going to do. You're going to do. I've seen you do it so many times. And I'm like, I know I'll do it, too. And thankfully, thankfully, we had some investments that worked out really well. So I was like, hey, we Good. have money to sit on for a little bit. So I'm not worried. Uh, we had savings, too, and all these other things. So I'm like, we, we can do nothing for like a certain you know, year and a half, two years, and we'll be fine. So I'm like, and, and I'm like, that's not even including what I'm you know making in coaching. So I was like, we're going to be good. But was there fear? Yeah. You take a 90% hit financially, and you have your, your wife's pregnant, and you move out of state. Um, yeah, a lot of fear. But here's the thing. What I've learned about fear is on the other side is your freedom. Yes. And I went through that. I've experienced mm-hmm. that so many times in my life. When I remember when I first started my practice five months in, 
it came a point where financially I was growing, but it wasn't growing at the level I needed it to. Uh, and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue. I remember praying and I was just like in a state of just deep prayer and just like letting, I'm like, I surrender. I don't know what I'm going to do here, but I need this much money before, or I'm going to have to close the doors. I just can't keep this up with the expenses. And uh, I'll never forget. I have three or four clients um, paying full that week. It just happened. And I mean, I had like a couple of new patients come in next day, they came back and they paid in full and I had a couple of people pay in full. And I was just like, that just bought me like six months with all nice. my expenses for the business. So I yeah. was like, all right, I guess this is what I'm meant to do. All right, this worked out and there's freedom, right? Cause I could have gave up, mm-hmm. but I just bared with it. I sat with it. I accepted whatever was going to come. I can only do what I can do in the present moment. And it all worked out. I've had many moments of certain times like that in my life. I remember two years into my business, I was like, you know, I don't know if things don't turn around. Uh, I mean, I've grown, but I'm not growing at the level I want to. If anything, I'm going to, I'm going to have to turn the corner. I don't know if I want to continue then if this is the case, not that it's because it's about the money it was the impact and everything else it just wasn't sure. there. And then, yeah. and then, you know, I ended up going bankrupt and that was actually the biggest blessing for me um, because it took the pressure off personally. And then all of a sudden I was able to now grow financially from that. And it, it was a launching pad for me. And which is weird to say that, but there's a lot of lessons in that alone with the whole bankruptcy thing. But um, as I continue on still to this day, I mean, there's things that come up, but that's one thing I've learned about fear is that there's always freedom on the other side. Mm-hmm. And really when it comes down to fear, if you have fear within you, that means you don't trust yourself in God or universe or whatever you want to call it. And when I started to shift perspective to that, it's like, I already say I can do everything. I can create anything I choose or want to experience. But then here comes the challenge right now. It's like, okay, do it. Let's show you. Here comes the fear. We're going to play with those limiting beliefs. We're going to challenge you a little bit. The universe may say, so you can let you learn from that. So you can grow and evolve so that I can then be ready to vibe at that level to experience whatever it is I'm choosing. Absolutely. No, that's great. I love that. Clearly I am a firm believer in that. <laughs> Facing fear really does bring freedom. I I don't know. I've said it so many times. I really hope that that's getting across. So I'm so glad that you said it also. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's, I always say too, like, you know, uncertainty, that's where our fear comes from because humans Mm -hmm. just do not like uncertainty. And I'm always like the uncertainty is where your, where your dreams are. Uncertainty Mm -hmm. is the freedom, the life you want to have. It's that going into that place because your mind likes to stay in certainty, likes to stay in comfort. And so when you're doing something that you're not used to doing, or it's outside your norm or your conditioning or how you've been doing stuff, fear is going to kick in. It's just a natural response, response of the brain to do that. And in psychology, they call that psychological barrier. It's the psychological barrier that you're going to go up to, which a lot of people do is they go outside what they know to try to reach and stretch. They hit the barrier. Here comes all the, you know, the fear and all these other things. And then they don't continue to keep moving. They let that hold them back. And then they go back to what they know. And then they go through this. And some people do this throughout their whole life and never Mm. go past that barrier. But if you just sit with it, and this is one thing that I had to learn. And and, and even this new process when I, you know, because my wife's very more, uh, I swear she's my biggest support in so many ways. Um, we complement each other really well. But one of the things is she, she'll always be like, how many times has everything always worked out for us? Look, and how many times everything worked out in your own life? And I always look back and I go, man, everything's always worked out. Like it always has. Like when you really look back at your life and I tell people, I do this with my clients all the time. I go, let's look, let's re, let's re, let's uh, reverse engineer your life. And I go, let's go back a little bit here and see where you are from where you start, where you are now and how it got here. I go, look at every aspect of your life. I guarantee that there was everything always worked out. It may not be when you wanted but it all worked out regardless. And I never had anyone say no to me. And I'm not saying yeah. that that's never going to happen, but it's one of those things when you really look at your life, it always works out. It always does. Even for me, like even like as much as I hate like bankruptcy, I hate it. It took me a year to make that decision. I, I was contemplating. I didn't want to do it. Um, I thought I was a failure. I was, I was trying to do the one thing to not go back to what I grew up with and, and, you know, having financial security and so forth. And yet here I am going bankrupt, which I thought I was, there was so much stuff, but it was the biggest, one of the biggest blessings I ever went through. Not because my, it was a launching pad for my business. It was because how I learned, one thing I learned from that, the biggest lesson was, is I created the experience to lead to that. And I saw how my focus, where I was putting my energy towards and all that created the problem. And it kept going that route and, and until just I made that choice. And I thought about that and I go, man, that was the best lesson ever because now I know where I have to focus. 
Now I know when, mm-hmm. and it taught me a lot because in my business, why did my business grow? Why did I start to really expel, ex- excel in my business? It's because I started to realize I had to keep my focus on what I wanted to, wanted to create for myself rather than what was showing up or, uh, you know, the things that I didn't like or what brought uncomfort. Just be like, hey, this is just part of the process. This is where I'm going. Keep the long, long game, long term uh, vision or the, just the vision in mind and just kept moving forward with it. Not as a wise words. Certainly, because um, we do indeed create our destiny and our future, <laughs> whether we like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, I always say the law of vibration always works no matter what, or yeah. even law of attraction, too, because that's the second law that follows. And I'm like, it's always there. It's always working. It's always happening no matter what, whether you want to believe it, whether you don't, whether you think you can cut corners, it energy is energy, and it is always you know, into alignment to whatever you are tuned into or free or where you're vibrating, vibrating at. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. And then, so now you have to tell us, um, so somebody is listening to this and they're like, they're vibing with you. They're feeling your vibration and they're, they're in sync with it and they want to work with you. How can I do that? The easiest way is you go to my website, empoweryourreality.com. And, and what I do is I offer a coaching call. It's 30 minutes. We hop on. It's me getting to know you really. Where What, what are you working on? What are you trying to, you know, what's your dreams? What's your goals? What's your struggles? What's your pain? What, what are you trying to, what you've been dealing with? And in that call, though, I, I will also give a couple pieces of advice just to kind of help move forward a little bit. And it's really a way for me to qualify to see if I can help you. Because if I can help you, I will share how I can help you and what I can do to do that. And if I can't, I'll tell you straightforward, like, you know, I just don't know if I'm the right person for you. And uh, that's kind of the main thing. That's the easiest way to get connected with me, um, have a conversation and uh, see if we can, if I can help in some way, shape or form. And the website is what again? Empoweryourreality.com. Awesome. 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 That's good stuff. So um, you did move, I'm assuming. So you're in Tennessee now. Okay. How are you like in Tennessee? Love it. Oh, good. Weather's better, so, huh? Than Illinois. We, oh, the weather. Yes, <laughs> we just we've been. I, my wife's been here for eleven months. I've been here for ten. Um, and just because when we 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 moved the month before we closed the practice, so I had to okay. keep flying back on the weekends for a little bit. Uh, yeah, we went through a winter here, and I looked at my wife. I said, "What do you think of the winter?" She goes, "I can do this any 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 day of the year." She's like. Four weeks is like was what considered like to be like yeah, the real and winter. It's, it's supposedly cold, right? Not really. Yeah, cold. it's cold. I I know my like, probations are cold. <laughs> right, right, right. Because I they had like a, they had like three and a half inches of snow one day. Oh yeah, and it was, it was just it was, it, uh, it was uh, Armageddon though, right? It was like oh my like god, this, we have no everything. Way, that, what are we gonna do? Like no, there's no bread, there's no eggs, there's nothing, no milk. <laughs> it was so fun. I mean, I I went to, I lived I went to school in Dallas for chiropractic school, and I remember the first year I was there, they had a a, a, a freeze advisory. That kicked in and they said, yeah. we're going to be closing school down for a couple of days because of the freeze advisory for the next couple of days. I was like, hold up. You guys are closing because of a freeze advisory. That doesn't mean it's even here. And they're like, yeah, we just don't have, we don't have the, the, the salt trucks and this and that, that you guys have in Chicago. And I was just like, that is so interesting. So here was the same thing, like three inches of snow schools were shut down. Oh yeah, Nothing, nothing. And, uh, but it's funny it, it melts within a day. Well, that one took a couple of days to melt, but, um, but yeah, but the winters, it was, I mean, literally I had my parents out here in January and we're outside in t-shirts and in shorts because yeah. the sun's so strong here. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm like, this is, I can take this it's any different. day of the week. <laughs> Love it. Absolutely. Instead of six months oh, yeah. of cold, I, and you know, wintery type, slushy type weather, I can yeah. take this any day of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm familiar with all of the zones. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, it sounds like you knew in, it a little bit. I lived bit. in the Midwest for a lot of years. I lived in like I lived in the South for a while too, so um, familiar with the differences. <laughs> so yeah, no, I enjoy, 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 enjoy. That's fantastic. So you know what? We are at that point in the show where we do our fill in the blank tradition. Are you ready? You ready for I'm that? Ready to rock. Let's do it. All right, awesome. All right. So the first one is: if I am fearless, I will. You'll do anything you'll choose. You'll do anything you want to do. I mean, you're going to be able to choose whatever you want to experience. There's nothing holding you back. All right. The next one is to me, fearless freedom means. It's going to sound very similar to the first one, uh, because fearless freedom is really, um, I, I kind of turned this into fulfillment, but it's, it's looking just at 
creating when creating the life that you can imagine again it's it's like your dream life you're just able to i'm trying to put it in words and what i'm feeling but it's just your dream life of what you want to experience and and having that like nothing holds you back there's nothing you're limitless i would just say you're limitless because you can choose and do anything because when you don't have fear holding you back what's going to hold you then nothing and, and like i said earlier fear is not trusting yourself in god or universe and so when you have that trust and that faith in yourself I think you're, you're, you're unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the last one is my battle cry is. Oh, my battle cry. Um, I am. Uh, I am. I like the word I am with that because it's a mantra that you should, it's two most two powerful words in the world, because when you use that, you can put that to anything and that's what you're going to be. And as a human, we get to choose that, you know, like a dog is a dog, a cat's a cat. But we, there's there's no limit on what, what we can and cannot do. There's Absolutely. no limit on what we can do or we can't do. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. both. I, right. I want to make mean... sure that sounded right. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. No, that's right. It's both. <laughs> so awesome. I am. Awesome. I, I am possible I am. to do anything. So, yeah. Love it. And so just tell everybody again, your um, contact, your website. Catch me on my website, empoweryourreality.com. I, like I said, I have everything there, social media stuff too, and all that good stuff. Awesome. 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 Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to spend with us here at the Fearless Freedom Tribe. We appreciate you and we loved hearing your incredible story. So thanks for sharing that. No, thanks for having me on. This was a lot of fun. I had a blast. Awesome. We're glad that you were able to come on. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Again, I'm Dr. G. And if you like this episode, be sure to subscribe so that you can get notified of when the next episode is going to be. And also, I'll catch you next time. Have a great one. Be strong, be brave, and unleash your greatness.